it's coming up later today. It's an old Tirana front row here. John Bow, his 41st career pole position in the Touring Car Masters, joins Jason Gomesall. Eddie Abel Mika starts alongside Stephen Johnson, who's a busy boy today. Glenn Seaton also in the field today with Jim Richards, Sven Burkhardt and Bruce Williams returning to racing. Cap Tilly and Greg Garwood off the sixth row. Adam Garwood is in the field this week and after replacing the gearbox last night, Tony Karen Veloski starting out of 15. Graham Stewart towards the back of the grid. And rolling starts for the Touring Car Masters are on board with the Tasmanian teenager, Adam Garwood. The giraffe civil contract and entry, that's his dad, to the right-hand side. And this is Tony Karen Veloski. We saw this car taking the shortcut earlier today. The Tips Warehouse in distribution entry, car number 88. And Rusty French in the foreground of that shot. Jason Gomesall, the debut of this brand new Matt Stone Racing prepared two-door hatchback Tirana. He's oh. going to want to get the jump and JB is going to need to be in the lead, I think. Whichever one of these two starts in front, I, I, I think it is a big chance to win. Oh, Johnson got the better of the start but nowhere to go and Bow is going to move that car across to protect the line because Gomesall was on that and Bow did what he wanted to do. Gets the lead through turn number one, Abel Nika. A bit high on the curves, we're three wide further back with Cam Tilly. So head down into turn number three for the first time. And you think these two guys are going to be pretty exhausted by the end of this race. Yeah, I couldn't think much that you could find something much more different to drive than a TCM car and a uh, Toyota 86. But JB, great start. He positioned his car well. He bottled them up a little bit in the S's and then he streaked away to a uh, four or five car length lead. So now he'll be putting his head down and just trying to get his line and length right. Really fast first sector. So uh, he had Gomesall out wide and uh, sort of boxed him in a little bit, which was pretty clever. Sven Burkhardt's 11th position for the Orange Porsche running the yeah. IROC class this weekend. Rough start, really. I mean, he uh, qualified P7 from memory and uh, just got swamped in that mess in the, at the start. I think the Porsche probably doesn't jump out of the corner as hard as some of these V8s, as you can see, and he's... Uh... Oh, Garwood, plenty of yeah. understeer in the turn. He gets past Burkhardt, that's his dad, Greg Garwood, now looking to go past the Porsche on the outside, and did it with ease. This is from Tony Karafalowski's perspective down to turn number 11. Oh! oh. Whoa. It's always a worry when you let go of the steering wheel. He's a bit casual on the pickup, wasn't he? One hand down at 6 o'clock. I don't think he was expecting the bottleneck. No. And Garwood taking to the dirt. Oh, no, this could get messy. Two wheels. Those Hoosier tyres will be dirty. And Burkhardt fights back. A bit racy for lap number two, but they fight on. Yeah, the little Porsche really needs to, to get away. He needs a bit of a gap in front of him so he can use the, the car's ability, which is carrying speed through the corners because, as we can see, it's... Uh, doesn't have a lot of horsepower. You can see after only two corners at the lead, he's now got over Garwood. See replays, he put two wheels in the dirt. We've seen plenty of that here today. Yeah, I think that's a bit naughty, oh. really. He should have left him racing room around the outside. He got out of the throttle early because he knew he'd had muck on the tyres, wouldn't he? Oh. Very, Very lucky for them both to, to get through that. Tony Cage sat there and Watched it from the front seat. As we go down to turn 10, there's the leaders. A bit of a margin back to Eddie Abel Meekin now. It's about two seconds. Impressive debut for this Tirana of Jason Gomesall. A lot of anticipation about this car. It's very stable, apart from that entry into that turn. And John Bauer for changing gearboxes last night. Pole position today. Looking to pick up some wins here. Winter Motor Raceway. It's the battle pack between Abel Meek and Johnson and Seaton. Long way back for Junior. He goes down the inside of Abel Nika. And will Seaton try the same thing? Door slammed shut. And this brings Bruce Williams into the mix. Great to have Bruce back behind the wheel of a race car after a layoff of many years. And Jimmy Richards is just about to join the party behind them. Remember, Jimmy had that off during qualifying earlier today. So we're looking from Tony Karpolowski's tips distribution car. Now watch Garwood, Adam in front here, pull across. And Burkhart's, yeah, a bit cheeky, wasn't it? Well, he, I mean, I always oh. think you've got to leave him enough room just to squeeze by. Only just squeeze by. But anyway, it's uh, no harm, no foul. A little bit of contact, but no one was hurt. Bruce Williams in this impressive left small built Tirana. The back of Seaton and Abel Nika here. The red flag yesterday with a small fire that 
was actually made to look worse by the fact the grass caught fire underneath it. But you can see where the car's a little bit black under the exhaust, above the exhaust there, so it didn't do a lot of damage to the car. And as you said, new car, less small built. Bruce is doing a great job driving it when you think this is his first race meeting in it and he's hanging on to these guys and they're you know, all in the top six. Good job. Glenn Seaton down the inside. That was good. Down from turn 11. So Abel Nika drops back another spot. And Seaton, this awesome Thunder Road Racing Australia Mustang, puts himself up into the top five. So Bow Domicile and pretty much the first 11 cars all under the race lap record is now Bruce Williams. So number five, Tirana, underneath Eddie Abel Nika. Going to Eddie's car, he's dropped a couple of positions in well, fairly easy. Yeah, I just don't think that, that you know a two door hardtop is really built for winter. I mean, a lot of braking, a lot of cornering, and a pretty big heavy car it can be a bit deceiving. But he certainly has dropped three or four positions in the last two laps, so maybe he's got a little bit of an issue going on there. Look out, Bruce Williams is off in the uh, sweeper. Just sort of talking about him before, cutting his way through the field and now drops in behind Mark King and Cameron Tilly. Yeah, then he moved out and cut the lawn. There'll be plenty of that this weekend. I know the Absolutely. track staff here are busy overnight, cleaning up the corner around here in particular to make sure the cars weren't bringing any of the dust and dirt onto the course. Burkhart's with Williams, and that's Cam Tilly ahead. 9th, 10th and 11th on the track. Worked lap 4 and 12, the Touring Car Masters. Race opener of the weekend. Two more to come tomorrow. Beautifully prepared car, the little pacer. Let's see Bruce Williams. Just got in a little bit deep in the sweeper. A little late on the brakes. It's pretty easy to do. Just once you get to the edge of that sweeper, all the marbles are out there and then you drop off the edge of it. So he didn't lose too much time. But uh, now he's got a bit of work to do. And here's Glenn Seaton going past Junior Johnson. Cito now puts himself up to third, but Johnson's not done. He's trying to switch back. Won't be able to do it there. It's such a short straightaway. And this guy's actually really banging on the pace. Glenn Seaton's just done the fastest lap of the race. Two tenths quicker than John Bow. Saw so Seaton on pole position earlier this year at Adelaide. Great to have him in the category, along with Stephen Johnson, who jumped aboard Mustang Sally last year. When John Bow moved into the Gary O'Brien Tirana, really set up a great season, didn't it, as we went across Australia and that battle just went on everywhere. Absolutely. Around the backside of the circuit, the exit now of turn number nine. Bow just starting to get a margin. He's further on the road now, leading the race by 1.5 seconds, and Glenn Seaton's turned the wick up. His entry, fastest to the second sector. Keep an eye on Cam Tilly, Burkhart's, and Bruce Williams. 9th, 10th, and 11th. The two Garwoods are behind these guys. And 12th and 13th spot. Overcast conditions. We saw the sun breaking through before. It's just getting darker to the left of our commentary position. No weather in the distance, of course. It's going to be a beautiful weekend here. The Woodstock Winton Super Sprint. You see the way the Porsche breaks and catches up to the pacer, but you just can't carry the speed across the quarter. Cam's got that thing wound up pretty tight. You can see how much stronger the other cars are down the straight. Now Bruce Williams trying to right the wrongs that instant he had at turn five. Car number five gets ahead of Burkhart, puts him back into 11th spot. Williams, this Tirana debuting this weekend at Les Smallville. He built the original Tirana back in the 70s. He's also handling Ben Grice's Toyota 86. Entry. So he's a busy man this weekend at Winton Motor Raceway. Back on board with Tony Karapolovsky. You see that mark in the centre of the steering wheel at the top there? under his hand at the moment, but that's so they can tell when the steering wheel is straight, as crazy as that may sound. So rally car drivers are big ones for that, so you can tell when the wheels are pointed straight ahead. So sometimes, as we've seen, it gets that busy inside the car. You need to know where you get the steering wheel so the wheels are pointed in the straight direction. Rod on the limiter down there for turn 10. Big long gear stick, real old school, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Puts his way back. This is... 
further down the field. He's 14th. That's Adam Garwood who settled down in this race after in a car all sorts of out of shape on a couple of occasions. I'm not oh. sure what those red lights are right in the center of the dash. Maybe oil pressure or something. Three different steering wheel approaches. He's anticipating the car to get sideways at every turn. Yeah, I think it's got so much horsepower, it's keeping him pretty busy. Oh, contact Oops. down here. And it's that rusty French it is, and it's scarred. What is the beautifully presented number four car? He spins off. And it won't be too much fun behind the wheel of car number 88 right now. Green flag waves and Tony Kay's car is stuck down there at turn number one. Rusty French came for a long way back. Oh, There's yeah. a lot of damage. Too much damage. Might bring it now. Bruce Williams goes off again at turn five. Huge dust cloud being kicked up by the Tirana. So it's all just kicked off here at Winton Motor Raceway. The eyes that could kill right now from Tony Karen Polovsky. Yeah, I don't know that I'd be in a rush to get out of that. He had a moment, didn't he, at the Clipsal 500. Looks like the Lexus safety car is going to be called. Yes, it is. About to leave pit lane. And that'll bring the field back because the first five cars were a 10-second margin right in front of us here at Winton Motor Raceway. On lap number seven, so just over half race distance. Bauf, Gomesall, Seaton, Johnson and Abel Nika. Let's have another look at that. Return well, serve, was, wasn't there? Yeah, Rusty was definitely a long way up up beside him. So he was committed then, bang. I don't think he's even seen Rusty trying to come down the inside. Just describe what that's like, because we sit there and watch this and go, how come he didn't see it coming? You can't just tilt your head over your shoulder and have a look well, around. they're hard to see out of, and, you know, he felt that, I'm sure he felt he was far enough up the front that, um, um, that it was his corner and Rusty shouldn't have been there. So you have a bit of a glance as you come out. You can see Rusty's pretty late down into there. I think Rusty's probably being a bit overambitious, to tell you the truth, to try and get down the inside there. Tony probably could have given him a little bit of room and driven around a little wider, but I'm sure he didn't see him coming. Watch the guard here peel away when it makes contact with the Sky Sands entry. It's Rusty's business down in the peninsula here. That wouldn't be expensive. Man, it looks so easy, but they are real tough steel bumpers on these cars. French survived, but... Karen Filoski is stranded as Bruce Williams just getting off the racing line. It's been so easy to do with all the, the dust and pickup through turn five. It really is a one car with line. He is just his best rally impersonation coming yeah. back onto the circuit in front of Greg Garwood. That's from Adam Garwood's on board. And really, when you tip that car in, you're out a fair way near the edge, and Bruce is just, just slightly overdoing it there. Here's Rusty coming back on the track. Great slow-mo shots. The man's got a lot to do with Pro Drive Racing Australia. Seen him in Porsches over the years and a Dodge Viper back in the Nations Cup era. Now he has pulled up. That's on the inside of the course there by turn five. So Tony Kay is taking the car behind the old pit exit there. There's an old garage it's on the left. Yeah, last time we saw him, he looked like he was getting out. So uh, done a great job to, to clear the car up. Hopefully the lights will be out on the safety car see a, uh, a race start. Take the back into the paddock. The paddock's just behind to the left-hand side, so wants yep. to get on with work before they come out for race number two. And there goes the safety car, so we're going to have a start this lap. Alexa safety car pulls in, and now John Bow leads the field around to the restart. Gomesall, Seaton, Johnson, Abel Nika, and Jimmy Richards. I reckon he'll go straight away the limiter on the exit of turn 12. With the restart underway, I'd say we're heading towards a time certain finish. Lap oh, nine. Go. But as you said, we're quite possibly going to have a time certain finish. Some of the massive limiter Man, going past us here. That was huge. I don't know who it was, but it's back in the field. It's Scan back to the field. There's Mark King, Cameron Tilly, Sven Burkhardt says drop down the order to 10th. Bruce Williams has got a problem. Maybe that was him going past. And now the race that had so much promise. The man at race the Thunderdome in the days. He's just crawling yeah. around. In fact, he's taking back to the infield, back where the old pit lane used to be. Yeah. 
I'm old enough to remember that too, just in case you want to ask. <laughs> this will be great for Glenn Seaton. He really was putting in some fast laps towards the, uh, the end of that period before the safety car. So I think he, Jason Gomesall is going to have his, his hands full trying to keep Glenn back there at the moment, which is great news for John Bauer, allowing him to skip away a little bit. That's what we saw on this oh. was. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, look at that thing. You see the flames coming out the exhaust, backfiring. It's like the timing's moved in it or something. It's incredible how he pulled that car up. They could have speared off down the turn one. Massive weight of knots. So Bow just starts to clear away from Gomesall. He's going to have to battle now with Glenn Seaton. I think your predictions might be right. Seaton looks stronger here, but either way, it's been an impressive debut. The Matstone Racing prepared to run up. Jason Gomesall likes the curves too much, where we see Glenn just scooting around the edge of them, and he makes a little bit of ground on him. This is where he was stronger. Through turn five, narrow turn five section. Paul Bow just gets it a little bit wider than normal. Funnily enough, most of the guys now have seen their best first sectors here in the closing stages. Lap 10 of 12, the Touring Car Masters. Closer than ever. It's going to be the acceleration out of here. We'll dictate what he'll do down at turn number 10. You see the very different lines that Seaton and Gomez are using through that last corner. Actually brought closer to John Bow, haven't they? Bauer's yeah, they've definitely closed up on him a little bit. We're through. Next time by will be the final lap. Let me go now to the top three to push on. Four. Oh. And now Gomesall runs wide, but it wasn't enough for Seaton to capitalise on it. Johnson's dropped back, and Abel Nika, who was getting past in the early stages, has himself back up into the top five. Down to the S's to start the final lap. Seaton, after jumping out the Toyota 86 series, who finished middle of the pack. Take aboard his usual mount here, chasing Gomesall. The top three result, regardless of the situation. Start out of five. Jim Richards going on the sixth position. We haven't seen much of JR in this race. But he's there. Same two with Fisher, Mark King, Sven Burkhardt, and Cam Tilly in tenth. Gomesall's really closed up on JB here. It's been quicker. In fact, he's the quickest man of the race of the first sector. The gap's still six tenths. Bauer's done this all before, though. Yeah, I think he's... <laughs> he'd be pretty calm in there, knowing what the gap is and what he needs to do. I don't think there's too much stress going on in that car. Oh, and the camera's come away from Adam Garwood's car here. Imagine watching that right now. You get motion sick. Yeah. Good shot to the floor pan in the passenger's footwell. Nonetheless, we come down to the final turn. Glenn Seaton, last chance to put a pass here on Jason Gomesall. He's going to hold on to second, but John Bow picks up another race win here at Winton Motor Raceway aboard the Wilson Security Tirana. It was only seven tenths of a second, and Jason Gomesall will hold down for second. Drag race at the end here between Abel Nika and Jim Richards. And it stays the same, fifth and sixth. Seaton got third, Johnson at fourth. Great drive to JB after that gearbox drama yesterday aboard the Wilson Security entry that changed it overnight. Jason Gomesall, great debut for the IC two-door hatchback Tirana here, race number one. The cars left to lick their wounds in that one. Tony Karafalovsky and Rusty French after their contact, but it was Bow the winner ahead of Gomesall, Glenn Seaton, and Johnson, Abel Nika, Richards, Fisher, Keith Burkhartz and Cap Tilly. 12 seconds down the road there for the pace and then the two. Garwood's 11th and 12th, Mercer, Little and Bill.